Yeah. I wonder why that movie's not popular. Like, wow. Alright, so all right, so remember we talked about uh, Carson biography having caves and sinkholes, right? Yep. And some of you guys complain because you didn't get a cave, but rather you got a sinkhole. <laughs> because after your sugar cube dissolved, there's nothing to keep the roof of your ball afloat, so it simply fell inward. That's exactly what happens in a sinkhole. <coughs> you have so much groundwater that has eroded away the limestone, and then basically the limestone's roof, there's nothing there to support it. When the water was in there, it acted as a buoyancy. We talked about that before, where the buoyancy of the water actually keeps the roof afloat, right? Remember we talked about that with volcanoes, with the caldera, that the magma chamber actually keeps the land afloat. <coughs> it's the same thing here, where the water inside that cavern is gonna keep that roof afloat. But when the water drains out, there's no longer any support, and the roof simply collapses inward, and that's how we get sinkholes. That's really all it is. No. Where? Really? That's not from Marshall. Okay. Where is that? But there's two. How big is Indiana? Well, it depends. Yeah. Alright, another feature with karst topography is called sinking streams. Yes. No, no, that's the picture that they go. All right, guys, if you, um, with sinking streams, there's something I want to point out to you here. What it really is, is mostly, you can't really see it too much in this picture, but you have a river that's coming in, and it looks right here, you got the solid rock, and yet the water's not going anywhere. And what the water has done is it found an opening in that rock and it's simply going into the rock, it's sinking into the rock. All right, so that's another common characteristic of car topography. What are they doing here? Just adding a stream. Fishing. They're not well, fishing. Well, Where are we going on the right? What are they doing on the right picture? Standing in a stream. Evan, what did you say? For gold. Yeah, they're staining the stream. Why would they want to do that? To see where it goes, right? I think, was Drew, were you the one yesterday talking about Florida? Or was it someone else? I can't remember. Was it Florida? What? what? Yes. That's not going to harm anything. Now, what they're actually doing here is it's a dye. Um, and they do this quite a bit in Florida. Uh, look at the picture directly above that on the nose. See how all those sinkholes are there? Those are not separate sinkholes. Those are all connected underground. Oh, no. Okay. So what they often do in Florida to actually track where water goes, this helps them to understand or to set up their, um, under, I guess, basically the watershed. Remember we talked about that a couple of days ago? You know, dumping into one sinkhole, is that going to affect another sinkhole? And then it will, absolutely. And so what they're doing here is they're putting dye in the river, and then they're going to track that dye and see where it pops up somewhere else. And if it does pop up, then those are somehow connected. And so this is something that they've done a lot in Florida. So it's kind of an interesting project. What would happen if they built a house on the sinkhole? Let me put it to you this way. Do you see the sinkhole we have up here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Look at the image. Look closely at the image. Looks kind of big. What do you see? A road. Where? That doesn't help. Which side of the picture? Okay, so this is the road, right? Is that a normal two-lane road? No. No, that's a major road. Yeah, so this would be like going down. Yeah, it'd be like going down Coliseum. Okay? That's kind of a big road. That helps you understand the perspective here, or the scale. We're talking about this. 
And then understanding that, how far is that in terms of a diameter? It's really dangerous. So yeah, build your house there. You had no idea. That's the problem. When we have sinkholes that occur, and they occur quite often, it's not like, well, that was once a sinkhole. Thank God we don't have that again. It happens all the time. And you build your house never knowing. And when that sinkhole goes, your house is going with it. So you will not know until it goes. Some sinkholes can be several hundred feet. Others might be a couple stories. Like this one right here is probably 40 feet at least. You crawl out. Yeah. <coughs> All right, now we're talking about, we'll go back to this whole thing on the caves. Uh, so remember we talked about these stalagmites, our yes. calcium deposits, and basically they're, they're called dripstone. Why are they called dripstones? Yes, it's the water, groundwater is still flowing through there, but it's in open air, and so it's really dripping out of the ceiling. And as it drips out of the ceiling, the calcium gets left behind. And sometimes, though, the calcium, the water drop on the side of the calcium, and it ends up on the bottom, so then it starts to build up. And occasionally, as we have right here, a stalactite, a stalagmite, meet in the middle, and we now have a pillar. By the way, if you ever do visit the cave and you want to figure out the fastest way to be evicted from the cave, touch one of those. Why? Because those take hundreds. <laughs> How many of you guys have hard water at home? Oh. Right. What does that actually mean? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of hard water. No, Mr. Kimball, on the other hand, that's a, he can't say anything like bottled water. Really? Like, I hate drinking out of somebody's faucet in town. I can only drink low water. Like, I like, I like, like hotel water. Oh, hotel water is always beer. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it's always, it has like a watered down 7-up taste to it. Yeah, it's just yeah. Cool. I mean, that's like, what all, like, yeah. Alright, so hard water. Um, basic definition of hard water is water that has heavy amounts of minerals in it. Okay, super amounts of dissolved mineral content. So we think about your water in the cage, that's going to be hard water, it's full of calcium. In our region, the problem we have in this area is iron deposits. We have huge amounts of iron in our water, and that's the metallic taste. Okay? And those of you guys who have water softeners at home, you have to keep pouring the salt in. Okay? You guys remember when we talked about zeolites in the rocks minerals unit? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So zeolites, uh, what they do, they are basically these crystals and they have these really narrow nano sized tubes within the crystalline structure. And what they do is they actually filter out because they're ionized, which means they have an electrical charge. And they use them as water filters because what the crystals do, as the hard minerals are coming through with the water, those hard minerals are also in the dissolved state, so they're ionized. And they come in contact with the ionized crystal, and the crystal actually bonds with that hard mineral and prevents it from flowing any further. So they're used as a filtration. Um, I know right now I can tell when our salt's getting low because in the shower my soap no longer lathers. Yeah, and you got soap right and get all nice and sudsy. Okay, with hard water, that's not going to happen. There's something within the hard water that prevents the soap from being able to kind of bubble up. And you also feel it too because, yeah, it's like your arm just, even though you're in the shower, 
your arm will just feel sticky. It just mm. feels dry and gross. It doesn't feel moisturized. Mm -hmm. And you're surrounded by water, and yet you feel dry. Okay, and this is, it's a really rough feeling on your skin, and it's all those minerals. Um, and so that's basically what hard water is. The problem with that is given enough time, I think I have that image in here. Nope. Uh, there's an image in your textbook talking about hard water, and they actually show a lead pipe, which thank goodness we don't use those anymore, um, that has completely crystallized, solid center. As the, the whole pipe is nothing but the hard minerals that are collected within the pipes. That's some of the reason why we've gone to copper. Because copper piping does not allow the hard minerals to crystallize inside the pipes. Also, lead, kind of bad for you. So kind of move away from lead pipe. Uh, that's one of the main reasons why we went to copper, is copper doesn't ionize, so therefore you're not going to have the hard minerals growing inside the piping. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we went for that.